About 30 years ago, my mother's cousin made my sister and I both capes, what I would now call cloaks, to wear as our winter coats uh, in Oklahoma winters, and we absolutely adored them. Um, I really loved mine. And the only thing that's happened in the 30 years is the lining has completely disintegrated. And up until this year, I was content to just let it live in my closet in kind of a sad state. And I decided this year that I'm going to fix that. So I ripped out all of the old lining, which was this red velvet that was again, completely falling apart. But the outer of wool is still looking pretty good. Here it is. As you can see, it has seen better days, but what I do love about the way that she constructed it was, um, you can see it's open here between the hood and the main body. And what she did, as far as I can tell, is basically connected, and she used a serger, but I think I'm just going to stitch it all the way around the whole outside of the cloak including the uh, the hood and the bottom hem edge um, and then pulled it through an open spot in the neckline and then hand stitched the neckline shut which compared to trying to hem this pretty full uh, cloak is going to be way 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 faster For this project, I knew I needed to pick my match points carefully, as the curved side seams make it impossible to have the plaid run with perfect continuity all of the way around the piece. Matching plaid is a lot easier if you follow a few simple rules. Rule number one is to use a fabric that has a balanced plaid. That means generally that if you turned it upside down or flipped it from left to right, it would look the same both ways. Rule number two is use what you've already cut as a guide for matching. For example, I used the first piece I cut for the front to set up where I want to cut the other side of the front. And for smaller pieces like this hood, you can actually place the first piece on top and then use the paper piece to slide everything around until it lines up perfectly. Once you have the pattern piece lined up, I like to remove the previous piece before I cut. This makes it easier to see and also, in case of mishap, protects the work I've already done. I'm using a walking foot to help things line up better. And if you want to use lots of pins to kind of pin baste, there's nothing wrong with that too if that's what you like. Uh, this is a pretty good seam. As you can see, my goal here is to get one set of bars aligned horizontally, but I'm letting the vertical parts of the seam be mirror image so they don't have to flow into each other. To make hand slits, I stitched down some facings and it's not difficult. They're basically very large bound buttonholes. Um, probably the hardest part is making sure they're lined up properly and then also cutting, which is the next step. If you don't clip close enough to those corners the first time, you can always go back and cut it some more. As you can see, I have this very clearly marked out with chalk. But I am, I will admit, sometimes a little bit of a clipping coward. So I will clip, uh, try to flip it through, and you'll see that I fail to flip it through, uh, and I have to go back and clip some more.
And don't forget to press and pound with that clapper. Now this isn't entirely needed, but I did edge stitch around those facings. Uh, it did help keep things more neat inside, but it really is an extra step and you could skip it if you wanted to. So I have my lining mostly put together now. I'm going to attempt to join the two. Just documenting how much I already am so excited about this. Um, I really recorded a lot of my cutting out process um, and I'm glad I did because look at that pattern matching. Fantastic. Coming to you live from the floor of my sewing room, um, I hung the cloak concoction on the dress form to admire it before I stitched the edges together and realized that both my cutting was generous uh, on the length of the cloak and also uh, may have experienced some bias droop of the uh, flannel as I was uh, messing with it. So I am actually going to leave it uh, in this unfinished state overnight um, and work on it again uh, in the morning to make sure that it has dropped as far as it wishes to drop. And then I will uh, trim all around the edges, the lower edges, and then sew everything together. So thankfully this is not the day that I planned on wearing it, but the day before. All right, so um, it's the day that I want to wear this thing, so I have to finish it. And I was reading uh, Liz Haywood's wonderful book last night, and she pointed out a method for hemming a skirt where you do attach the lining to the skirt, but it's a way where the lining is three-eighths of an inch shorter, sewn on with a quarter-inch seam, and then uh, a little tiny bit of the outer fabric actually folds to the inside. And I think that will look a little nicer um, than the way I had thought I wanted to do it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is trim the lining to the same length as the outer, as close as I can, um, and then throw it through the serger and trim off that 3 8 of an inch and then sew everything together and see how that goes. All right, almost done and actually quite proud of myself. <laughs> so after I stitched the hems together and pressed it and uh, tried to understitch it but gave up because it just wasn't going great um, between the springy wool and the kind of heavy, um, kind of heavier fabric, it just wasn't working very well for me. Um, I did notice when I was taking it apart that my mom's cousin had actually top stitched the whole hem. I'm not going to do that right now, but if I decide later that I want to, of course, I always can. And you know, I bow to Marilyn's wisdom that that <laughs> would definitely have been easier than trying to understitch it the way that I did. But anyway, after the hem was sewn, um, you know, I flipped the the whole thing around and I sewed up the two uh, front edges, um, including uh, connecting the two hood edges, pressed all that really well, and then I thought this was so brilliant of her as well. She actually left uh, pretty big gaps in the um, necklines, so then you pull the whole thing out through the neckline. And what I've done is I've just pulled, after I did that, um, I pressed it again and then I pulled the outer layer, the black layer, through the hole in the lining and I stitched that uh, by machine. I did notice Marilyn had finished all of that by hand, um, but I'm going to try to do it all by machine because the arm slits are still disconnected from each other, 
Um, and actually, you, this green poking out here is actually a pocket that she built in for me under the right hand. And in high school, I noticed it was the perfect size for a can of soda pop, uh, Coke, as we called it in Oklahoma. Um, and so I've preserved that pocket and I'm going to attempt to stitch that down. Now, one thing that, that happened is, I don't know if it was my patterning or my marking or if it's just the way the fabric has relaxed. Um, my slits, my arm slits aren't perfectly lining up. The lining, the inner layer is a tiny bit lower. Uh, than the outer layer. I'm, I'm trying to decide um, what to do about that. The one good thing is I used a black fabric for the facing of the lining layer. So even if there ends up being a little little show through there, you can see the gray thread if you look really closely, um, then it's not as obvious as if it was the bright, you know, plaid showing through. So I'll decide what to do about that. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the open arm slit to reach through pull out the plaid neckline and stitch that so that that can be stitched by machine too because I am I am really running out of time. <laughs> All right, so here we are. Hood is complete and the whole thing is extremely warm and cozy and I don't have a hook or a clasp for it but what's funny is um, when Marilyn made this there was two plastic loops and I think a couple of buttons and those basically came off immediately they just weren't up to the task of how heavy this garment was um, even when it was first made so actually most of the time I, I never really had a way to close it um, and at the time the velvet helped kind of keep it in position and now the flannel is going to do the same. Um, in terms of the arm slits, I think I'm just going to do a very loose uh, hand stitch all the way around uh, the slits. Um, partly um, because, you know, as I said, they're not really lining up. Um, but I don't want it to just be open. Um, but then also that way if I ever do need to do any sort of repair or anything else like that, it's going to be a lot easier uh, to get into the inside through the arm slits. And what's funny, I noticed maybe someone out there uses this technique or maybe this was in the pattern, but when I was taking it apart, I did notice that the arm slits were machine sewn in the bottom half and hand sewn in the top half. I, I don't really understand why, maybe that's just that's as far as you can get by machine. Um, or maybe, maybe there's some other reason. But just so you know, uh, thank you, thank you to my uh, now uh, happily remembered uh, relative and I am I'm so grateful uh, to be able to wear this again because um, it was just a really big part of my life when I was growing up and it's exciting that I can use it again so thank you very much.